guys, when it comes to hamstrings training, does everybody come to us saying, I want to build bigger hamstrings? Well, to be honest with you, unless you're a physique competitor or a bodybuilder, growing the hamstrings may not be your number one priority. But having stronger legs, having a stronger posterior chain, preventing yourself from knee injury, knee damage, if you're going to do any heavy lifting and you want to improve your squat, your deadlift, having stronger hamstrings is going to be essential to making progress. Having stronger hamstrings so that you can progress on into your training in the gym. So when people say to me, why, why do I need bigger hamstrings? I say, do you want to make any progress? Do you want to be able to do split squats? Would you like to be able to do squats? Would you like to improve the metabolic output of your body and efficiency and make sure that you don't get injured? So when I talk about developing hamstrings, I'm not talking about just making them big for competition. I'm talking about training them through an optimal range, preventing injury, giving you longevity of your lower body. And then also being able to allow you to do more in the gym. Would I let somebody squat, uh, squat without having stronger hamstrings? No. Would I let somebody deadlift without having stronger hamstrings? Would I let somebody do an, uh, something like a glute ham raise without doing um, any form of isolated hamstring work in different ranges throughout the strength curve um, where a muscle can apply force throughout an entire range? No. So let me show you this. Guys, so this is why we have a prone leg curl or line leg curl. We have a seated leg curl, these by Prime. We have the glute ham raise. Um, we have the uh, kneeling leg curl in the far corner. Why do we have these? Well, I'll tell you why. The hamstring, the fully shortened position in an extended range is here. And then in a lengthened range, it's going to be here. So you need to train the hamstring throughout this range of movement. And you also need to remember that it doesn't only just flex at the knee joint, it flexes at the hip joint. So really, there's a lot of ranges throughout the contractile capability of the hamstrings where you may be weak. So if you've got knee problems, if you've got hip problems, if you've got problems in exercises such as the squat, I guarantee ten time, nine times out of 10 that your hamstrings are gonna be weak. So when we look at exercises such as the prone, prone line leg curl, let's have a look. So one of the problems with this exercise is gonna be this. You curl up, the first thing that you do is you lift your hips up. Well, this is a problem for every single person. What's happening when you, when you start lifting your hips up? Well, the point where you get to where you're very, very weak, the body doesn't want to go there. So what it tends to do is it doesn't allow you to get the hamstrings very, very, very short. So it lengthens your hamstrings, thereby lifting your hips up and you're finishing in like the mid range of the hamstrings, okay? Now, if I was to actually drive my hips into the pad, squeeze my quads with my hamstrings in a lengthened range at the back, and squeeze up, driving my quads down, driving my hips down, I would therefore show the point at which I'm very, very weak. And the point where most people are very, very weak and they have the best opportunity to grow their hamstrings is this position here, the fully shortened position of the hamstrings. Now, go to your gym and get on the line leg curl and then tell me whether or not you find you can get into that fully shortened position with your hips down, with your body slightly, not extended, but in a straight line and get it as fully short as you possibly can. Most people can't. That's your first part of where you're gonna make the most develop, development out of your hamstrings. And that's why, to be honest, why we have the, the uh, prime equipment, because it allows us to load the machine in three different planes, three different places. When we're loading it at the top, what ends up happening is that the, the weight gets considerably lighter where we're getting to our weakest range. Now with most machines, you'll find you get up to here and then where you want to go, you can't go, so you either fling it or you lift your hips up. So that's something that you really need to focus on when you're doing line leg curls. You're driving the hips into the pad and keeping a line, straight line in your body and even, even if it's with somebody just spotting you, taking you up to the range that you can contract fully without lifting your hips up, you're going to go to new territory and have a completely new uh, area of growth for your hamstrings. So now I'm in the seated leg curl. Now we've moved from a line leg curl, so we're going to get it fully shortened. And now we're training with, in a, a flex position and we're going to train the hamstrings as knee flexors out of more of a lengthened range. Now the important thing here is if your gym only has this machine, you're only gonna be training your hamstrings out of that knee flexed lengthened position, okay? You're not gonna get them fully shortened. 
So you're going to miss a huge opportunity for growth and development. So if you don't train in a gym which has got varying different angles of leg curl machines, you're going to miss out on huge opportunities to change and you're going to still be highlighting a weakness in the body which leads you through to um, a huge opportunity to not improve certain areas like lift, big lifts like squats and, and split squats, etc. So with this exercise, what we concentrate on is not pulling the knees up and pulling down. What we're consciously thinking about is pushing down into here and pulling ourselves, pulling our heels down, under, around, around, around to a fully contracted position. Again, the minute that you have to start lifting your back and arching your back, you're not truly training your hamstrings. We're literally going to train the hamstrings to this range here, pulling down, there's no movement of the spine, and you're going to contract fully into the position at the bottom. So remember this, you aren't lifting your knees up to initiate, you're pulling your bum down, you're pushing your hamstrings, squeezing underneath into a fully shortened and contracted position, or a lengthened to a mid range. Remember, that's going to get you fully shortened. Again, this exercise, fantastic, this machine, because it can change the pegs, which means that at the point where you're getting considerably weaker, you're going to be strong here, but where you're getting considerably weaker, you can change the pin that allows it to drop off a little bit more, getting it a little bit lighter. So you can see just by changing the two exercises and making them, uh, switching them around, you can actually get strong throughout the full strength curve of the hamstrings, therefore having a huge opportunity to grow and progress onto other exercises. I'm gonna add the glute ham in here, right? Because honestly, it's a great exercise. People get so much from it. However, are you using it from a hypertrophy perspective? Are, are you gonna try and grow the tissue, the, grow the muscle? Or are you just literally gonna bounce up and down, swing up and down, and actually not use the hamstrings at all? When people get into it, one of the biggest mistakes that they make is forgetting that they're actually training the hamstrings, okay? Now, in a lot of people's cases, when they go forward, they have to swing back up and then they contract at the top. And what's actually happening there is you're getting flexion and extension at the hip joint and using momentum to come all the way back. So what we always do with any client is, first things first, you're gonna lock out. Even if you've got to use somebody in front of you to hold yourself in that position there, you're going to contract your hamstrings, squeeze, 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 and come back, okay? If you can't, and you have to get to here, swing, you're not using the hamstrings as knee flexors, you're using the hip as a momentum. And this is something that we teach all the time. Even if you need somebody here to help you, to contract this position here, but then you've got to use your hamstrings to bring you all the way back. If you can't and you have to use momentum, this exercise really shouldn't be one you should progress at at all. So use exercises such as the seated, use the lying leg curl, and there is also the kneeling leg curl, which in this case would work the hamstring a lot more in the kind of mid-range rather than the lengthen range. Same thought process applies. It's not a hip movement exercise. It's all about flexing at the knee joint. So if you want to train the knee flexors, the hamstrings as knee flexors, not necessarily hip extenders, ensure you're creating, having a lot of variety to your workouts. Use different pieces of equipment. Use the hamstrings, lock yourself down, and just get stronger with those movements, and you will hugely improve. Now we've got to think about training the, uh, sorry, the hamstrings as knee flexors. Now we're going to train the ham hamstrings as hip extenders and flexors. Now what tends to happen, well let's talk about hamstrings and glutes. Because when a lot of people do these exercises and they do flexion and extending, all they really think about is just bending and standing up. What they don't think about is the impact of bending and then bending the knees, okay? They want to train the hamstrings, but as the load gets too heavy, they bend the knees. Now, what is bending the knees doing, okay? Bending the knees is basically length, not allowing the hamstrings to lengthen, okay? So we get to here, they're longer, they're longer. Now, the point that they get very, very weak, oh, the body bends. So that basically takes the load, the length and the tension off the hamstrings and shifts it right the way back towards the glutes. So these are less active, and then the muscle groups that are gonna bring you back are the glutes. Why do I know this? 
Well, A, because I know bi biomechanics and human movement, but second of all, my glutes grow when I do the RDL. And for years, my glutes used to literally grow as soon as I did an RDL. People always say RDLs are great for hamstrings and the glutes. It just depends whether you're gonna split them off. When I do the RDL, um, especially this last year, I've done the RDL as a semi-stiff deadlift. So I've gone from here, making sure there's no movement of the knee and making sure I'm stretching the hamstrings down and then contracting my hamstrings up, placing less tension on the glutes. Before, I used to go down, slight bend of the knee, all tension you'll see, is all tensions back here, and then I used to just pull back through my glutes. My glutes used to explode, my hamstrings didn't get as much development. Since we've got more hamstring equipment, <clears throat> and I'm able to train the hamstrings in a different variation now, the development I've had is huge. So remember this, I'm gonna grab the bar, and we're gonna go from here. So there's two things you wanna think about. One, am I training the hamstrings? Two, am I prioritizing the glutes? If you're training the hamstrings, slight bend to the knee, and then you're gonna keep the bar close, and you're now gonna think about stretching the hamstrings, and then from this position here, you're gonna think about squeezing the hamstrings together and pulling the bar up, using the hamstrings to this position here. If I'm gonna switch it round, and I wanna use the glutes, I'm gonna put more of a bend in, now the load is on my glutes. I feel that on my glutes, and now I'm gonna squeeze back up through the glutes. I'm gonna bend, glutes, squeeze back up. So, what tends to happen with people that do the glute RDL, or the RDL glute focus, they just push back and extend. Phenomenal exercise for getting a good amount of load through the glutes, but if your hamstrings are the area of your body that are lagging, the hamstrings are an area of your body that aren't particularly strong, you've got to learn how to do the, the semi-stiff leg deadlift from the neutral position here with very little knee bend and make sure you get a hamstring stretch. That tip revolutionizes everybody's variation of how they do hamstrings and make sure that they target in either the hamstrings or the glutes. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you leave any comments, any other videos you want to see, and I'll see what I can put together.